This is Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. I'm glad you could join us today. Here are the top 10 news stories that you need to know about right now. First today, according to the Chicago Tribune, Illinois Catholic leader Cardinal Francis George spoke out against the redefinition of marriage on Friday and was joined by a number of African-American pastors who are opposed to legalizing homosexual marriage in the state. The Cardinal said legally changing the biblical meaning of marriage will not serve the common good of our people and will certainly lose the sense of family that is the basis of our understanding of who we are. George said the nature of marriage goes back to a sexual expression based upon the complementarity of men and women. Anything outside of that is morally wrong. The group of church leaders said they chose to speak out because staying silent might mean appearing as though they condone legalizing homosexual marriage. Second, according to Christianity Today, a new LifeWay research survey reveals that approximately 6 in 10 churchgoers say Christianity is the only way to obtain eternal life. The survey, which queried nearly 3,000 adults who report that they attend a Protestant church at least once a month, examined doctrinal positions for part of what LifeWay calls the largest discipleship study of its kind. It found that plenty of churchgoers still struggle with basic truths about God, the Bible, and salvation. LifeWay Research President Ed Stetzer said that's not exactly surprising, since Americans are used to having endless combinations of choices. Third today, according to the Christian Post, while many evangelical pastors and leaders have been active in promoting immigration reform through the Evangelical Immigration Table, recent polls suggest that white evangelicals fall behind the rest of the nation in their support of immigrants and immigration reform. A recent poll conducted by the Public Religion Research Institute and the Brookings Institute and a recent poll conducted by the Pew Research Center Both show that white evangelicals are the least supportive among the combined religious and race-ethnic groups studied of creating a path to citizenship for unauthorized immigrants. The survey showed that white evangelicals also had some of the most negative attitudes toward immigrants. Fourth today, according to the Baptist Press, the president-elect of the Southern Baptist Convention's Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission, Dr. Russell Moore, gave an interview to C-SPAN. In his first television appearance since being named the president of the Ethics Commission, he was forthright in his positions, but stressed the importance of Christians being kingdom-minded in approaching issues. Moore, who will begin official duties on June 1st, was featured in a live segment of C-SPAN's Washington Journal. He said that on many issues, Christians are going to have to have a prophetic voice to a culture that largely disagrees with us. The full interview can be seen on bcnn1.com. Fifth today, according to the Christian Post, a federal judge in New York ordered the U.S. Food and Drug Administration to make the Plan B emergency contraceptive pill available to young teens and girls without a doctor's prescription. The White House promptly responded by saying the age restriction was the right common-sense approach. While today's women need to prove at the pharmacy they are 17 years or older to be able to buy the morning-after pill, U.S. District Judge Edward Corman of the Eastern District of New York ruled that women of any age should be able to buy emergency contraception without a doctor's prescription. The Family Research Council expressed serious concerns regarding the court ruling stating that the decision flies in the face of medical information and sound judgment. Sixth today, according to the Associated Press, Egyptian security officials said that clashes between Muslims and Christians erupted early Saturday in a town near Cairo, leaving at least five people dead. Investigators said they are waiting for autopsy reports to confirm how the men, four Christians and a Muslim, were killed in a city north of Cairo. Police said the clashes began when young Muslims drew inflammatory symbols on an Islamic institute and a local mosque. Christian onlookers and Muslims nearby began arguing, and soon residents wielding guns began firing on one another. Seventh today, according to Bloomberg News, employers in March added the fewest workers in nine months, and the jobless rate fell to a four-year low as the share of Americans in the labor force slumped, marking a pause in the job market recovery. 
Labor Department data show that payrolls grew by 88,000 after a revised 268,000 gain in February. Unemployment dropped to 7.6 percent from 7.7 percent, the lowest since December 2008. Eighth today, according to the Associated Press, a sweeping anti-abortion bill is headed to Kansas Governor Sam Brownback. The House gave final approval to the measure which blocks tax breaks for abortion providers and outlaws abortions performed solely because of the baby's sex. The measure also declares that life begins at fertilization, language that abortion opponents call a statement of principle and not an outright ban on abortion. Though the bill's opponents are skeptical, Brownback is likely to sign the bill into law. Ninth today, according to BET News, the black unemployment rate dropped to 13.3% in March, compared to 13.8% in February, according to figures released on Friday morning by the Labor Department. The overall unemployment rate also dipped slightly to 7.6% from 7.7%. The federal government workforce in which African Americans are overrepresented has begun to receive notice that they will have to take several unpaid days off in the coming months due to the sequester which took effect last month as well. Tenth and finally today, according to NBC News, Nelson Mandela was discharged on Saturday from the hospital where he had been undergoing treatment for pneumonia. A statement from South Africa's government said his decision to release the 94-year-old anti-apartheid icon was taken, following a sustained and gradual improvement in his general condition. It added that the former president will now receive home-based care. President Jacob Zuma also thanked the hard-working medical team and hospital staff for looking after Mandela so efficiently. That's today's top 10 news stories. You can read all about these stories and more at urbanchristiannewsnetwork.com. As you go throughout this day, keep this word in mind. 1 John 3.16 says, Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. God loves you. He always has, and he always will. He loves you so much that the Bible says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, why don't you get to know him today? Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose by the power of God for you. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today, and he will. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thanks so much for listening. May God bless your day.